transmit until the thing goes all the way through and comes up to the end. And during that time, we are in fact, or Bob is really looking at, there it goes now, let's see if we can, oh, I got it. And there you can see where the six is. Uh, a little imagine, and oh no, the B's looks pretty good. There the, there's the F and there is the A. So if you look really carefully, actually it doesn't come through as good here as it does on that card, but there's a, a dit, dit, da, dit, dit, da. And that's where Bob Bowish came in. He says, yes, I could see it there, and he explained it to me and told me where to look. So we got da, 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 and then right across that line. I'm glad I had him because I, we probably wouldn't be talking here tonight. We'd have been, I've been trying to make it work again. <coughs> so there it is, five and a half minutes. And then also, if you'll notice, this one was picked up in Norway, and it was about the same time frame. Let's see, the fifth. Yeah, it was the same uh, the same night. We were picked up in Norway and then in Las Cruces, in Mexico. The Norway one is right there. And uh, oh, let's see here. There it goes, right there. If you, if you look right there, da, did, da, da, did, 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 da, did, 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 all right, you have to stay off of the coffee before you do this exercise because it takes a, a lot of concentration and you don't want to have your eyeballs twitching. What frequency is this? This is 10, let me see what it is, it's 10 point, um, hang on just a second here. Uh, You'll have to come up and read the screen. I don't have my glasses. Is it on there? It's, what, is, what is yours? I think it's 10.140. 10.140. And it, when you see it, and you think how little power you've actually put into the equipment, and when you get these this feedback, this is pretty exciting stuff. So, oh, there we go again. Gosh, I love that call sign, I guess. I can't believe this. Now, is this audible? Or is it just... No, it's not. It's like flashing light. Oh, right. No, it's way below. Yeah, the actually, it's what you see. It's just, yeah. just you're looking at a image that's coming from Las Cruces or Norway in this particular case. And this is the image that's on their website. And then you access their website and you can see this stuff on there. Uh, keep in mind now, this call sign takes five and a half minutes, so it's pretty tough to, you know, it'd be pretty tough to sit there and, and see this even progress at, uh, you know, in real time. Even just listening to a dip, it's a pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one, one did. So, that's my half of this show, and then the second half of the show is Mel, and he has his QRSS equipment here. We're going to take a 30 second technical break to hook Mel up, hook his computer up to this projector, and then we'll be back on online again. Are you busy? What was your transmitter output power? Pardon me? Your transmitter output power for that? Milliwatts. Microwatts. How many? Very, very little power. That's why the, uh, the receiver does the analysis and it, it only records that which is there like a second, third time and so on, and the, uh, oh, excuse me. Bob here. I hope this is not on camera. He's been doing this for seven or eight years. Who, Bob Bowes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bob is not here. He's and uh, in fact, from Blue, uh, from Blue Mountain, like this. we did New Zealand with uh, three watts or five watts or something. Oh, that's a lot of power, I don't. I mean, if Bob was there, <laughs> well, you were just going to Bob's house across the, the town, right? No, no, no. This is sitting in my shack being copied in New Mexico. Or it's sitting in my shack transmitting and being received in Norway. So we're talking, we're talking milliwatts here. And they can do it down to microwatts, but uh, I haven't done that. That's a little bit of power. And 10.6 what were the units? Hertz, kHertz, 
Megahertz? Megahertz. Oh, megahertz, HF. 10 megahertz. Oh, okay. 10 megahertz. Next. Yes. You may already be planning on doing it, but it'd be interesting to see what the receipt process is for that for the detection. I mean, see what it looks like? Yeah. I just got it. Yeah. Front, yeah got to That'll be the next next issue here. I'm turning it over to Mel, and Mel is going to amaze you also. <laughs> okay, good evening, everybody. Some of you probably remember about. Uh, Eight years ago, I designed this little QRP radio for the build something uh, activity that we did. We you know, built a transmitter back in uh, July. You speak of that 2008 or 2009. Uh, this is the radio, and when I brought this in, I had already got most of everything working, except somebody pointed out that there was a USB port in the back. Well, at that time, the USB port didn't do anything, but it is actually wired into the computer that's in here. The last couple of weeks, I decided to um, get back into the software and see if I could get that uh, QS or the USB port to work. And so I've been writing the software for this, and I've been writing software on the uh, computer here. And I'm not going to explain everything. We really don't have time, but. <clears throat> Basically, what I'm going to do, hopefully, is get this thing turned on, and I'm going to run this little program that I wrote. <clears throat> this is something I've been working on. I started off with a uh, kind of a hello world kind of situation <laughs> where I had like just to get the computer to work. I wrote a protocol that was my own little protocol that I could use to co to uh, talk to this thing. And my goal was to basically get the configuration out of the radio onto the computer screen so that you could actually see the whole configuration. So <clears throat> I ended up writing this little program. What you can see on here are the different functions that I have built into this. There's a small keyer inside, which is designed for either a straight key, a bug, or an iambic key. If I select the iambic, it'll actually bring up another box which allows you to select either the iambic A or the B version. <clears throat> you can also select the mode, either CW or CWR, which is actually a, a very important thing if you have a direct conversion receiver that has both sidebands coming in simultaneously. And when you're tuning the radio around, you can actually tune, you can pick up the same station in two different places on the dial. And, and the idea is to tune it so that you get the right uh, frequency that the person is operating on. And you can hit that, there's a little button on here that you can select either CW or CWR. If you hit the button and nothing changes, then you're right on frequency. But if you hit the button and all of a sudden the signal disappears, then you're not on frequency anymore, so you've got to kind of tune around to find it again. It's just an extra step you have to do with a very simple receiver. Uh, this receiver actually has no tuned circuits in it with the exception of an input filter, and uh, it basically does the bandpass by the audio frequency that the uh, audio amplifier set up for. But anyway, let me uh, see if I can uh, read the configuration from the radio. And what it did, it read the configuration. I've got my username coded in, which actually appears on the front panel. It's set up, in this case, for the iambic uh, B key, so I can use a, a paddle key with it. Um, I can set the uh, key speed either uh, several different uh, different levels that I might want to operate on. I have a whole variety of uh, key speeds that I can select. Or if I want to, I can change the uh, tone. On a direct conversion receiver, the tone is actually the separation between the transmitter and the receive. So if you have, a, let's say this one's set up for 600 hertz, it means my transmitter oscillator is at one frequency and the receive oscillator for the the uh, BC or for the uh, local oscillator is actually off by 600 hertz. That's how 
close they are. And then the other functions that I have built in here are for setting the thing up for other parts of the system. And I can also, let's see if I can do this. I'm not used to this because I usually use a mouse. Just a minute. <clears throat> Let's say I want to set the frequency, I should be able to set the frequency and this should change on the front here. I'll do this right. Hopefully. Yep, 7050. Uh, if I want to go to the uh, 40 meter band, or the 20 meter band, let's say I put in uh, 14 megahertz, I can set that frequency. And it does that. Yes, uh, can you uh, make that uh, window fill the screen so that people can actually read it? Excellent. If I do, it won't be any bigger. <coughs> it's not going to make all the text bigger. It just makes the, it just make the screen bigger. Also, what is CWR? What's that? What is CWR? That's where the, uh, in one version, CW has the transmitter frequency at, at above the receive frequency. And if you put it in the CWR, it puts the transmit frequency below the receive frequency. Right. So it just switches the oh. band, or not the band, but the, uh, the side band. So anyway, I'm able to get this to talk. Now, the other thing I wanted to do, just out of curiosity, was can I actually get this to work with FL Digi? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me get out of this for a second. We'll see if this actually works. It's loading the program. And let me see here. Mouse. Configure, read control, cap. Um, in order to do this, what I actually did was say was write a uh, an XML file. And what that is, it's basically it looks a little bit like an HTML file with a bunch of tags and some text on it. FL Digi has set up a, uh, a system where you can actually control any receiver or any transceiver using this mechanism. Basically what they're doing is allowing you to select the frequency, the mode, which is the, in this case I only have two, the bandwidth for the, the unit, in this case I only have one bandwidth, it's about 1200 hertz, and um, also to operate the push to talk. And let's see. Let's see if I can get this uh, set up here. Uh, let's see. Let me just make sure I got this set up right. Okay. Push my eyes. Okay. I think the screen's looking a little different to me because of the uh, because of the projector that's on here. Oh dear. Well, anyway, what it's supposed to do is should try to load that frequency that I have in there. It's, it's, well, anyway, what I tried to do was get this to uh, oh, change the combo again. Okay. 
I'm having a little trouble with getting the COM port selected up. But anyway, the idea is that I can actually write an XML file to control the VC where from that bell gives you. I had this working at home, and one of the things that I was able to do is actually look at a PSK31 symbol. Um, since I don't have a way to transmit through this without the keys, I'd have to manually operate the key through that bell digit. But uh, you can actually use CW to follow uh, some of the digital modes. The PSK31 has worked pretty well. And I was able to decode a message that came from France and another guy down in Texas that we're talking about the hurricane party. So anyway, that's my little side project. Again, we're right on time. If you can get down to the meeting hall in less than 30 seconds. <laughs> Lights, please. <laughs> Y-O-U. Kurt, KM4, J-O-A. Philip, AK4, A-O. Mel, A-I-4, W-K-Z. Boss, W-4-R-A-X. Bill, W-3-H-X-F. Luis, Kilo Mike 4, A-B-P. Don, K-B-4, P-H. Nancy, N-1, G-F-V. Brendan, KM4, H-R-R. Bray, KJ4, CNN. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, are you good to go, Yasser? Yep. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, next thing in the agenda, we usually do take uh, reports from any committees, net reports, etc. cetera. If you've got one, please raise your hand. Oh, yes. I think Brendan's prepared to make a statement. Hi, I'm Brendan. I was born in 1967. <laughs> so from uh, MCOM and preparedness uh, perspective, I printed out a couple of things from ready.gov. You're help, uh, welcome to help yourself or just go to ready.gov and check it out. It is National Preparedness Month. So uh, good information at ready.gov. And um, on the 22nd, the TNT forum, I'll be doing a presentation about our club and what we currently do for MCOM and preparedness and what I'd like to see us do moving forward a little more aggressively uh, for those fields. So that's all I have. Can you say anything about the uh, Burke uh, Festival for American oh, right Preparedness? Um, Probably no more than I do. Oh, well, tomorrow and Sunday uh, the, at the uh, Burke Center uh, they're having a festival uh, to raise money for some uh, uh, school uh, grants, and uh, they're all it's uh, based on disaster preparedness. Uh, that's their their mission. Uh, the uh, EOC and uh, I forgot the other organization. Uh, oh, uh, the. CCC, Citizens Co uh, something core. Do you remember what it is? Uh, I don't remember that particular. Okay. Anyway, they're, they're, they're both. Oh, Citizens Core Council. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, they're they're both uh, sponsoring the uh, event as well, and they're giving out disaster preparedness prizes and stuff like that, gifts and whatnot. So that's it. Excellent. Thank you. Um, the one report that I think we all do like to monitor is uh, your treasurer's report. Do that. Okay. Uh, it's kind of slow now, but uh, through August 31st, we brought in 14,800 uh, revenue, and the, the big items this month, in the, the month of August, were a $550 donation from the town of uh, Vienna, and we also got $200 from the sale of some equipment. 
we spent year to date 13,800 and uh, the big items this month were $303 for repeaters, uh, repeater parts and we also spent $100 on the uh, NAQP for August and that's it. We currently have uh, uh, 18,000 in the bank and 23,000 in CDs. Any questions? Bahamas. I don't think you want to go there. Pull away. This got hotels. All right. Um, I don't think we've got anyone who usually proselytizes for the Marine Corps Marathon here tonight. Maybe it's too late. I don't think it is. And I'm pretty sure it's exclusive for volunteers. So I know you've heard it. But if you're still on the fence about participating, I'd urge you to do so. Um, there are plenty of emails on the reflector about where to sign up, but feel free to let me know, or Brendan, I'm sure, is plugged into that too. Um, all right. A uh, couple of other things to mention. Um, you probably saw an email from uh, Mike, the club secretary, about uh, the bylaws update being posted on the site. He outlined you know, what he'd like everyone to do, and I completely agree with that. Take a little time. Uh, it's good bedtime reading, if nothing else. And uh, scribble your comments down and get them back with us. We'd really appreciate it. Um, ah, and the weather is just perfect for uh, the volunteers' picnic, which is going to happen tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah, it's at uh, Glendon Park. I'll add some comments to that. Okay, yeah, go for it. All right. Yes, tomorrow, Glendon Park, and that's on uh, downtown Vienna, on between Glendon and Beulah Street, very in parallel to uh, Maple Avenue. Meet at the lower parking lot, which is the one that's right off of Glendon. Beulah is higher, but it's farther away from the uh, pavilion that we have. So if we meet at the lower parking lot at 10.30, and you can help carry some of the stuff up to the tables up there, and then after you once carry the food up, when you get that going, then bring up your show and tell items and sign of set that up, because as soon as we get things cooking, then we'll move into the show and tell while we're burning the burgers, and then we'll be able to uh, have you tell us about some of your stuff. 10.30. Linden uh, parking lot off of Linden at Linden Park. Thank you. Sure thing. Um, all right, so uh, we'll take a short break to enjoy the refreshments, which I think were provided by John. Bert. Is that right? Bert. Bert. John's always doing something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Bert is up here.